What's up, guys? This is Eric. I'm back um, from Team 4855 Batteries in Black. I'm here with my second tutorial. This time, it's about data wiring. So, just as I promised in the last video, where I tapped into a little something called ports on some of the blocks, here I am. I'm going to make my tutorial about data wiring, <clears throat> which is going to use those little ports that come out of the, from the bottom of the blocks. So, what is data wiring? Well, um, data wiring is just... NXCG's method of having blocks communicate with each other. Well, I mean, why would you want blocks to communicate with each other? Actually, you don't use it a lot in um, FLL unless you're trying to think of some really creative solution to some kind of a program. And not a lot of you are going to need to use it, but it's a very important skill to have for you to be able to make creative uh, programs in the case that you need it to. So here I'm going to pose, a, pose um, a kind of a program that we might want where we're going to have blocks that are communicating with each other. So I thought of a cool idea. Maybe we should have a random number generator in uh, as a program that's going to display random numbers on the display of the next T. So let's call this random gen as my program. And let's go. So I'm in my complete palette, just like before, as you may notice. So um, the, the big idea is that in your data folder I guess you can see this block called random now what random does is it goes ahead and makes a random integer and the settings is the minimum and the maximum so right now it's 0 and 100 meaning that this little block is gonna create a number from 0 to 100 and that's great but how, how do I use this number now that's where the communication comes into play <clears throat> so we've got the random number block and we have our display block and we, we really just need to get these two blocks to communicate with each other so that this number can go inside the display block. Now, luckily, the display block has a lot of ports for this. And so the display block, once we put it onto text, uh, what it's basically going to do is it's going to be able to accept text as its display. So I'm going to, just for the uh, convenience, I'm going to clear out everything that's on the display block that's there already and you can see here that over here this 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 little port down underneath the display block on the left side it's going to accept information and this it's going to basically if now the display block is going to display whatever comes into here um so you can see that there's little t there's actually two ports coming out here so the always remember that the left port is for information going in and the right part is for information going out. Okay, so um, a little quick note about what kind of data uh, NXCG supports. So NXCG, there's three different types of data. One is a number, one is a piece of text, and one is a true or false. Um, now, actually, in other programming language, more uh, complicated ones that are used in the real world, there are actually many, many more different types of data. And NXCG, we just got these three, and it's good enough for our purposes. And the the problem with the three different types of data is that they can't you can't take a number and put it into a text. So you, you can see that the number wire it's yellow. Um, when the text wire that's orange. Now that's uh that doesn't really tell you anything, but I'm gonna tell you that that means that you can't take a number and put it in text. It's gonna give you an error. This program's gonna give you an error. But luckily for us, um, there's a neat little block in the advanced folder. It's called number to text. And you guessed it, it takes a number and gives you a text. So I'm going to put it between these two blocks. And you can see here that you can take the number. So this random number generator is going to create number, er, a random number. And it can come out of here, out, out of this the right side of this port. And I can click it and pull it out and put it in here. Remember, left side is for information going in. The random number, the random number, uh, sorry, the uh, number to text generator that takes in a number and gives out a piece of text. So um, I'm gonna put my number in here, and then I can take this text. You see now it's orange, and I'm gonna put it into the text part of my display block. And that, there we have it. Um, using this, the NXT is already going to give you 
a random number on your NXT. But that's not really cool. We want to be able to keep on making random numbers because that's just so much better to use. So I'm not sure if everyone's familiar here, but I mean, this is an advanced um, course, I guess. So I'm going to assume that we all know how to use a loop. Um, quick familiarizer, a loop makes it so that a piece of ta uh, a piece of code or um, some instruction runs over and over again. When you're done running the um, running through these three blocks, it's going to start over and do it over and over again. And then we're going to control how it loops by putting a weight block. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put a weight block at the end of the instruction before it loops so that um, we can control when we want to create random numbers. And since not every robot has a touch sensor attached to it, I'm going to go ahead and use the NXT orange button again. Uh, make sure to choose it as the bumped setting, not the pressed. The bumped means that you push the button down and up. That, that's just, it's a lot safer to use bumped. Okay, just, unless you know what you're doing, just use bumped. Um, and uh, unless you know what you're doing and you want to use something else, you need to use something else, go ahead and use bumped. Um, and, I, well, that was kind of fast, wasn't it? Um, I, I hit the end, and that's all there is to it. So basically what this program is going to do, when you run your program, it's going to display a random number from 0 to 100. Again, you can change the settings, uh, lowest value, maximum value. You, it's, it's, going to be, um, it's, it's going to create a number from 0 to 100. Go ahead and, and then displays that on your screen, in the middle of your screen. And then if you press the orange button, it all starts over again. This is a loop. It hits here, starts over, creates a new random number, and displays it all over again. And you can do this infinitely. It's kind of fun. You can you can change the random number to go from uh, like one through six. That's going to create like an effect like a dice. You, you, like if maybe you're playing Monopoly and you don't have a dice, so maybe you could pull out your NXT and there we have a new dice. It's it's a really neat program. It's not going to be this specific program is probably not going to be useful for uh, your FLL programs, but um, again it's it's this, it's all about the data wiring. Sometimes you want your blocks to be able to communicate, and this is the way you do it. Um, let's... Yes. Um, again, I just want to say that this is a really brief tutorial about data wiring. Um, there's a lot more stuff that uh, data wiring is going to bring in, complicate a lot of stuff, and make it allows you to make a lot more very powerful programming. I'm going to make those in future episodes. You're going to be able to save information as variables and all kinds of good stuff. I'm just tapping on to the surface of this huge topic. So that really just concludes my uh, video. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick today. Um, that concludes my video about data wiring. And um, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to make lots more great videos. Subscribe and like, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to ask me questions in the comment box or suggest different topics for me to make. Adios.